The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and this week we're kicking off the first of our new Advice Tech sequel episodes. That's right, folks. Sequels are in. We're going to be bringing back a previous guest on the show to get an update on new features, enhancements and all the other exciting things they've been up to since we last heard from them. Here today to keep us up to date on all things Ascendium is... Well, actually, a veritable posse of individuals as we have three guests on the show for the very first time. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Scott Miller, Brian LeBrand, and Lee Frost. Woo! Welcome, welcome. Thanks, Dina. Thank you, Peter. You're Thank all you. very welcome. So, Scott, you previously joined us on episode 24. Would you believe we're at, let me take a look, episode 49 now. So, it was just a little bit, a little while ago. Um, and you might remember when we had that previous interview, we got to know you at the beginning of the interview a little bit better through your use of technology. Now, we can't be so prosaic as ask you the same questions. So I've had to come up with different questions so we can get to know you just that little bit better. Let's start with, you're a tech guy. If someone came up to you or a member of your team came up to you and offered to build an AI buddy just for you, what task would you want it to magically do for you? I've seen this a lot on uh, Pinterest lately. They actually have developed robotic arms that operates with AI (gasps) and you can actually program it to cook meals. So it can actually cook you over 100 different meals at home with this setup. So I would actually ask them to find a Crohn's friendly program because I have Crohn's disease uh, that's programmed into that AI chef so that I could have nice, safe meals at home. That's a fantastic idea. There's something quite satisfying with having a glass of wine or champagne and watching somebody else cook. Like that's quite a pleasant experience. So I'm right there yes. with you. I love that as an idea. Now, the second question, Not we all know that not all new tech is good tech, right? It's not always a good idea. Is there a more analog version of technology that you actually still prefer? It would have to be books. Mm -hmm. So I love a hardcover book. I don't like reading on the Kindle uh, or on on Apple Bookstore. I I prefer a a hardcover book. I feel like I digest it a lot more. Um, So that's something I don't think I'll ever move away into the digital environment um, in that respect. Yeah, look, I'm halfway now. I actually read books on my Kindle and then if I really love them, I buy them. So I satisfy my speed reading needs and also my hoarding needs. So both get covered. Uh, Fantastic. All right, let's dive into Ascendium, shall we? So for those who haven't listened to our previous interview, and once again, I would encourage you, listener, um, if you don't know Ascendium through our previous discussion, then please head to episode 24. But just in case they haven't, Scott, can you just tell us the broad category you guys sit in, you know, in terms of what Ascendium does and provides? Yeah, of course. So the first thing we always get asked is, are we a CRM? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. We are CRM agnostic. Now, what I mean by that is Ascendium can be used alongside any existing CRM, uh, but we are also two-way integrated to X-Plan. Now, 
when you use Ascendium, Ascendium falls into the category of a point in time solution for when you create financial advice. Right. So that, that time when you sit down, the client's going, yes, I need advice. You jump into the Ascendium fact find, do the research through Ascendium with our partners, Product Rex and Omnium, and then produce the SOA um, and supporting documents through Ascendium. Mm-hmm. And we can send that back to any integrated CRM, um, or you can simply export it to your desired CRM. So sure. that's when you use us. Okay, so not just um, document production; it's also the creation of the advice, the discovery of the advice, for want of a better description, and the document. Correct. Yeah. It's the the process of creating advice, which is where we live. Because yeah. uh, as, as a planner, that's always the most time consuming and challenging <laughs> part. So being able to automate that. Um, as many manual functions as possible yeah. so that you can produce advice in as little as two hours. Fantastic. All right. So then, you know, moving into the future, and once again, folks, go back and listen to that other episode if you want to hear about all the details. We're going to be plowing forward into exciting projects. You've been busy, uh, as evidenced by the two gentlemen joining us here on the podcast. Um, now, as I understand it, you know, Brian's here from LML Insurance Group, Lee's joined us from the Community Broker Network. Scott, can you give us the headline of what you three have been up to? What trouble have you been causing and what's the exciting project you've been working on? Yeah, so about six months ago, we were introduced to Brian. So Brian's very forward thinking um, like ourselves and then we're introduced to Lee and, and we can see where they're both going. Now, one of the challenges in this industry is obviously PI insurance mm-hmm. and it's really hard for a PI insurer to go, you know what? You're safer if you do this. Right. You're better and and more defensible if you do this. And so over 20 years in this industry, most people are moving towards technology. And so if advice has been created in technology, shouldn't the technology be aligning themselves with a PI insurer to actually go, what can we do to help in the overall aspect of advice? And so we've been blessed to be working with Brian and Lee and the insurer to actually look through Ascendium, lift the hood, understand the dynamics of licensee setups, challenges of planners, and actually come to a, an arrangement where if you're actually utilizing Ascendium for that advice production, it can actually benefit you from a professional indemnity insurance premium level. Ooh. So I want to pass that over to Brian and Lee to talk on because mm. because that's they, they really excel at. Um, but the goal for me was to go, okay, well, Ascendium will help the planner with their advice needs, will help the licensee reduce in their compliance needs through our statement of digital advice system, managing that. And now we're partnering with Lee and Brian to help with the PI aspect of it. So, Brian, what was it that attracted you to the idea originally? Look, um, the insurance market at the moment is pretty <laughs> tough and we keep, uh, we keep seeing uh, premiums uh, increase year on year. Um, the Ascendium solution um, is going to help reduce some of those costs on the PR side and, and provide affordable advice for financial planners. Um, so for us as an insurance broker, we we excel in finding solutions for clients, and that's what we do. Um, from a professional indemnity point of view, we've seen increases of up to 75% over the past four mm. or five years. Uh, we are seeing some additional capacity come into the market, but pricing is still going up. So it, it creates some angst for financial planners and it also some, leaves some of them in the lurch where they actually can't find yeah. cover. Uh, so it does it creates difficulty. And would you say that, you know, historically, I mean, I'm, I'm just reflecting on our own experience with this, there's been, it's like it's quite a distant relationship really uh, historically for PI, right? It's quite a, it's a bit like a credit person with a bank where they, you know, they encounter you once, they've got to absorb a whole lot of information and make a, a one-off decision. It's always been like that historically. So I guess that's where this is quite different is where it's trying to get a, a better feel for the operational levers that will make something less or more risky. Is that valid? Yeah, that's valid. And look, professional indemnity um, policies are extremely mm. broad um, and very complex as well. And the complexity creates issues for underwriters when they're trying to price because most, um, in most part, the the policies come with uh, retroactive unlimited yep. dates, which means uh, at the time the policy is written, um, if a claim is not known, that claim will be picked up if it is known after the policy inception yep. date. So the insurers need to take that into account. They need to price it correctly on past history, trading history of that company, and that's where the complexity comes yeah, in. Yeah, of course. Now, with uh, with Ascendium and their, um, their solution on the compliance side, that just brings – um, it brings a different flavor to the to the history of of those 
uh, clients. Yeah, and I guess, um, you know, when you're assessing risk, I mean, you can never forecast what's going to happen. You can never predict um, actual risk. Other than, well, then it'd be much easier, wouldn't it, if we could all do, predict with, with uh, well, and I wish I could for the markets, actually, predict with accuracy. But, um, you know, rigour and process is what can give more comfort, right? So that's part of what I guess is attracting you to the Ascendium tool is that it's giving that rigour to somebody's process and the way they're creating advice. Absolutely. And it's just reducing that human error, um, which insurers enjoy. <laughs> Not the human error, the reducing of it, I'm guessing, is what you enjoy. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so, Lee, how about yourself? What's What attracted to you guys to this idea? Yeah, so for us, um, just to give your your listeners a, a brief overview, so we're, we're the licensee for, for, Bris, uh, for Brian's company. So, uh, in many ways, I guess, when we've started speaking to Scott, we have a lot of affinity with the way they're going about their business in that we could see a solution like that working quite well for us uh, as a license holder. So mm -hmm. uh, I guess for us, just reiterating some of the points that Brian's made, we can see the consistency that Ascendium brings to their process as eliminating a lot of that variance between um, different, uh, different planners, yep. right? So what Brian was saying is effectively if there's uh, if there's a breadth of information you need to place a BI policy, uh, and let's say that's 100%, if you can u make a uniformed approach to 40% of that, that effectively means that the underwriter is only assessing a smaller percentage. And that's where we see Ascendium sort of guiding people through that process and de-risking it as being really valuable. So for us, I guess one of the key things was actually finding a partner who values that uh, in an insurer, yeah. and what we've been able to do there is is, is attract someone who's an, a, an Australian-based um, underwriter, mm -hmm. but more importantly, has two international uh, insurers that sit behind them that are both AAA rated. So, so depth there. I guess again, uh, yeah, again for your listeners, I, I guess scale is important, right? Yeah. So the only time you really need this is when. Uh, when something goes awry and you want to understand that you've got the right people behind it. So I guess that's where we come in is making sure you've got that right right level of uh, scale behind it to, to make sure that we can replicate it across uh, the entire industry. So, Scott, last time we spoke, we talked about, you know, guardrails being a powerful way of, of getting personalised advice, but certainly leading advisors down the path. And, you know, even new advisors, like this is creating some rigour and structure and discipline. I'm guessing that's part of what makes this type of partnership possible? Correct. So, the guardrails have always been a core part of Ascendium, but in, in the last few months, we've really lifted those up a lot higher. So it still allows the planner freedom to create the advice they want. Yep. But what the guardrails do with our statement of digital advice system is, for example, if it knows that you're closing a fund and opening a new one, it's only going to allow the specific strategies that are applicable at any one time to that specific action. Right. It is going to limit or open additional strategies based on other outcomes that trigger throughout the system. So it's actually providing that guided, guided process. Yep. We can also, from a licensee perspective, if you're managing, say, 400 planners, obviously there's a lot you have to control. Now, if you have an, an open technology system where you can do whatever you want, then it's up to the planner to make sure they, they don't step out of those lines yeah. or they don't provide a strategy that they're not accredited for. With Ascendium, you can, you can actually put up those guardrails right down to the specific strategy or scope of advice for an individual planner or user in Ascendium all the way across the licensee so that you know what they're accredited for, what they can provide advice for is is all they can do throughout the system. Yeah, okay. Now, the other powerful partnership that we've done is the partnership with Inzumo. Mm -hmm. So a lot, of, a lot of IFAs, for example, have to manage their own compliance or rely on a consultant to get that wording. Now, the relationship with Inzumo means that licensees that use Inzumo can access that through Ascendium. And whenever the compliance is actually updated by their, their team, that flows seamlessly through to our Ascendium Soda system to update across all the planners and any planners that have restricted strategy capabilities or limited, we can actually make sure they don't flow to those specific planners. So having a partner like Inzumo is great because they can come in and do the configuration of X plan, but we keep those guardrails up, compliance strategy wording uh, for strategies, bid, risks, are all flowing seamlessly into Ascendia. Because that's something that I was curious about from sort of, you know, Brian and Lee's perspective is um, I would have thought the last – so you so 
getting a deeper understanding is incredibly valuable, you know, when assessing risk. The last thing though you want to do is sort of be in the day-to-day tick boxing. Like it's like there's a line for that, right? So there's a assessing risk versus being part of the process. And so, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, does that mean you're signing off on every template or signing off on like, you know, what the, what's that line? So I was curious about how you chose at, you know, is it is it more that the structure that Ascendium broadly brings gives you comfort or is it down to some elements of what they put in place that gives the comfort? Maybe from you, Brian. Oh, look, I think um, it just puts structure yeah. in place and that structure just creates um, consistency yeah. and that's what the insurers want to yeah, see. Yeah, okay. And so that's... So this is not trying to uh, step into, say, the licensee shoes or responsible management. Like anybody like this, not trying to take over that. It's merely responding to what I'm assuming is some stats that say, hey, businesses that have this sort of structure in place um, inherently have less risk. You know, it's it's inherently going to re- result in less likelihood of claims and things like that. And so therefore, um, why not reward people for that behavior? Much like, you know, if you've got an alarm on your car, you're going to pay less insurance um, premium for the car. Correct. So I'm assuming that's sort of what we're talking about here in a general sense. Yeah. So the complete the complete history of advice, all data changes, modifications, um, everything's stored um, within the the Microsoft Dataverse that is Ascendium. So that that complete history provides at any point in time, if a claim does arise, you'll know exactly what happened, when it happened, where it happened, all the information that contributed to that outcome, um, and that. That helps provide their nurse. It's similar to some insurers where they offer like wellness programs, yep. where if they do certain health activities or steps on a yearly basis, they lower the insurance premium. So they're taking steps to actually help reduce that risk to the insurer. And that's the same with Ascendium, taking steps to help reduce that risk to the insurer. Yeah. And it's a great example, actually, because it's not just the actual activity that represents lower risk. It's the mere willingness to embark on said activity. You know, the mere willingness to implement a tool like Ascendium demonstrates a certain attitude to compliance and risk. So, you know, that both of those things are valuable, I would I would imagine, if, uh, you know, you're an insurer and you're assessing um, the PI requirements for a financial advice practice. So, I'm a bit curious, actually, um, you know, how much value are we talking here? So, is this a, oh, yay, you get a 1% drop in your premium. So, how much how much bang potential? And, of course, I'm not going to hold you to this, anybody. It's all okay. But uh, what sort of bang for your buck are we talking um, that's possible? Um, look, at, at this stage, we're looking at about a 20, per, a 20 points off the insurer's standard okay. rates. So, it is significant. Um, obviously, each risk comes with its own risk yeah. profile, and uh, and the the insurer will um, analyze the data and the prior claims history. But the starting point for us is that twenty points off. Yeah, I mean that is significant. That's that's a material change. Um, and when you know we're in an environment where everything's just costing more, um, then the, you know that can be the the thing that just sort of whew, lets everybody breathe out a little for a bit, <laughs> instead of uh, stop breathing when they get their premiums um, coming through, their renewal coming through. So that's exciting, actually. I'm I'm. In fact, so excited. I'm a bit curious and I love each of your perspectives on this. We can start, say, with you, Lee. Why do you think this sort of deal hasn't come up before? So why do you think this is the first one of its type? It's an interesting thing, isn't it? So mm. what I would say is this kind of risk pairing has been more predominant probably overseas than in Australia. We've okay. been a little bit slow to take this up. So if you look in the US, for example, they've been extremely good at, uh, as you say, where you've got a car alarm, they'll discount your car if you've got a a water flow meter, they'll discount your home insurance because flood is the most likely. Yeah. So we really haven't um, progressed as far in the local market. Um, part of that could be to do with the tech um, over here. Yep. Uh, and I guess that's what we've been able to do here. It's a, almost a perfect pairing of a, well, an age old industry, really. Mm-hmm. Insurance has been around forever uh, since sort of boats started sailing uh, um, sure. and they were doing the original marine contracts. But really what this is is a pairing of that old school assessment style with uh, sort of the, the tech that Scott and the team bring and it's allowed us to actually bring something to market that, um, yeah, perhaps uh, not hasn't been thought of but uh, hasn't actually been brought together in the way that we've been able to. So I, I think I'll, I'll probably ride on the coattails here a little bit and say that Scott and Brian are really uh, the brainchilds here and we're just an enabler in the whole process. But um, to your point, Peter, I think, 
uh, there should be more of this uh, in Australia and, and hopefully this will be uh, sort of the tip of the iceberg. And Brian, what would be your take on that? Why do, you, why do you think we haven't seen sort of more of these partnerships in an effort to get better results for both the insurer and the insured? Well, look, I think Lee said it on the nail. I think um, it starts with the client mm. um, and Ascendium have produced a product that's going to uh, reduce that exposure from the client's forefront. Um, once that exposure is reduced, the insurance broker can come in and find a suitable product, and that's exactly how the partnerships work. Yeah. yeah, which makes sense. To that point, Scott, then, you know, how does this work? So I'm assuming it's not, gee, I've bought Ascendium, woohoo, premium drops by 20%. So so how exactly, um, you know, within a practice, if somebody went, okay, I'm really excited by this, what would be the process they'd go, they'd go or the path they'd go down? Yes, obviously you'd want to pass this up to the channel, to the head of the licensee or compliance or directors, anyone that actually has control of that PI policy, has that control of the decision making. Obviously, it would be an evaluation of the Ascendium solution to make sure it fits your framework. So if you're an X-Plan shop or an X-Plan licensee, which 50% of the industry is, two-way integration to the open API, ready to go day one with advice production, ready to go. Yeah. So those are the easiest solutions for us to slide into. Uh, We are happy to integrate to other partners if a licensee requires. um, So that's always an open discussion. But the easiest way is if a planner wants to get a reduction in their PI, pass it up to your licensee. Enough planners passing it up, that engages a conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's where Brian and myself come in, talk about the partnership, what the PI does from Brian's perspective. And I talk about a tech perspective. So from a tech perspective, the goal is to leave you neutral or better off by adopting Ascendium. So you keep your core CRM, just make a few things to toggle off, plug Ascendium in, and it's usually neutral or a cost saving. Yeah, okay. And so then, you know, aside from that, is there any sort of insights into the deal or or things that people could be doing before they embark on on the process? I mean, you you also may have current Ascendium users that are like, what? This is so exciting. So so what's the best way for them to embark on this um, and take advantage of the opportunity? Yeah, obviously, like you you got to look at when your renewal period mm-hmm. is for your PI and there's a few things to consider there. So the perfect time to start is I'll pass it over to Brian to give you that perfect time to start reviewing your PI. Uh, but when you review Ascendium, we find usually four weeks of use okay. is enough for you to go, okay, yeah, this is good. Yeah, okay. But in the PI part, I'll pass it over yeah, to Brian. Yeah, Brian, what's the perfect timing? Um, the perfect timing for us um, to get into the market is two to three months out of uh, renewal date. Um, and essentially, you know, finding a right solution is about delivering information to the underwriters. So the supply of all the data, the renewal question is that the uh, clients have previously completed, the claims history, that's the data that we need um, with their risk profile. Right. That's then supplied to the insurers for analysis. Yeah, okay. And so, you know, take take some time to collate it all before they even, you know, get started on this process. I, I say that to people also when they're dealing with, with lenders, like just get your ducks in a row, get everything together, um, you know, go once and submit paperwork once um, and make it easier for everybody. Because the other thing about, um, and I'm sure you, you guys can agree with this, credit people are much like underwriters where if there's a gap, they think it's it's a bad gap. This is a black hole. This is not a shiny hole. So you want to fill all the gaps before you give them the information, make sure they understand everything so that there's not doubt or uncertainty for any part of the application. Perfect. Anything other, before we sort of dive into more on Ascendium, anything else that you'd each like to share on um, the deal or what you see as the opportunity going forward? Lee, was there anything else you wanted to share with the listeners? Yeah, probably nothing major, but I I guess just to hark back to that point around um, sort of strength that I made earlier. So um, being involved with CBN uh, or Community Broker Network with the largest largest broker network in the country uh, by some way, And what that means is that um, Brian and his team um, have got that support sitting behind them. So if you picture that, obviously, when you want this to react is when you have an issue. Uh, And Brian will obviously put the cover in place that is appropriate for that. But we also have protection behind that. If if something's to go awry or um, something weren't to to play out with the insurers, it it might seem uh, from the outset, Mm -hmm. which is extremely unlikely given, uh, given the strength we've got. Um, it it would be backed by our own uh, professional indemnity. So it's almost like the PI behind the PI, yeah. which is uh, a large tower built out of the UK. So yeah, okay. um, I guess you you can uh, you can go into this with a, a degree of certainty that um, whatever might happen, 
you've got the right cover in place and you've got the right people behind you to get the outcome you need. Perfect. So that's kind of Brian, anything else you'd want to share about the deal or the, the partnership going forward that um, the listener needs to make sure they're aware of? No, look, I think from our point of view, it really is uh, a team mm-hmm. approach, a collaborative approach, and uh, through those efforts, it's just brought the whole deal together. Yeah, which is, I mean, kudos to all of you because this would be like keeping bunnies in a barrel, this type of deal. So um, because there's so many ways that you can approach it and, and different interests, then it's exciting that this has come to actual fruition for you um, and and is real and, you know, sort of um, tangible. So, Scott, was, before we dive into some other Ascendium stuff, anything you wanted to cover off on this on the partnership specifically? I think there's probably... Um as, as I've been on this journey in tech, the, a lot of the roadblocks usually stop at the compliance team <laughs> with licensees because because they want to really have control over that SOA or, or that advice that's being produced. Yeah. And traditionally, you can't do it in some, some of the other systems available. What I think this gives them certainty in is if they're using the SOTA system through Ascendium, you, you have complete control right down to an individual planner with your exact strategies, wording, risks, everything. So I think this deal just really does go, okay, well, compliance team, you, you now have your insurer saying that this is a way that you should probably have a look at. So I think that's going to enable more open conversations with compliance teams that's actually going to be more fruitful because ultimately this Ascendia makes their life easier and then the PI deal will make the overheads easier on the licensee as well. And what's it, what's exciting about this for me is, you know, I've been around a while, um, grey hair is evident, um, and generally when, you know, we're – when compliance teams or when a tool is trying to put in place that type of control, what it really does is just gives you a whole lot of things you can't do. Like you can't do this, you can't do that, and here's 47 pages you've got to add to the back. There you go, that's the SOA. Whereas what I like here is, okay, there may be restrictions because of the um, certifications you have or whatever for that advisor. You can do things and the guardrails guardrails are in place to help you do those things um, and it'll just make sure it, it sort of guides you down that path, you know. So it's not the don't, 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 which I think a lot of us have experienced historically. Um, it's the yes, it's empowered, it's great tech, you're going to go down this path, but it just happens to be able to take into account the things you should or shouldn't do. So I think there's some real um, empowerment in that that probably has been lacking historically um, for advisors where we just feel like there's there's a bigger list of things we can't do than we can, to be quite honest. <laughs> Correct. So Ascendium just really focuses on that human error as well, which right. is that that level of automation we take to the next degree within those guardrails. Yep. The planner is still the one making the decision, yep. but Ascendium is doing all the heavy lift in the background. Yeah. So it'll identify based on the financial data in the client's back find what risks need to be in based on the compliance rule sets of the SOA without you having to think about, oh, did I include this risk? Did I delete that wording? Right. Endium system automatically does that and then as soon as you get the SOA out, it's already been prepared, personalised and tailored to that client that you've directed. Which is, I mean, it's exactly what tech is designed to do, right? I mean, it's these things that we shouldn't have to necessarily think through every time. We should be so focused on the engagement, on the the human element, on connecting with the, you know, the consumer that um, – that's what this tech is like. All tech is meant to do. It's meant to do the repetitive and the guardrail and the structure and the checklist and all those things that can be really structured. So, um, I think I'm really excited that this is a deal that's benefited from that going forward. What else has Ascendium been up to since we last spoke? What other features? What other tweaks have you guys added that um, people can take advantage of? Uh, so, obviously, the Inzumo partnership, with, which we've put together, is continually expanding our library, and, and the relationship is quite strong there. We are finding that planners may have strategies, but then have a unique way of doing that strategy. So, we'll engage in Zumo to actually prepare that, right. place it into the system, and then map that to the data network, which identifies when it's when it's applicable. So, that expansion of the strategy database, and we have over 300 automated variables now, mm-hmm. which means automated calculations, automated formulas. Um, When it identifies something's happening, it it will go place that there for you. So that's another update we're doing. Um, The the one which is often overlooked is that post-editing. So we've called it our beautification project. (laughs) So right down to if you want a 1 or a 1.25 spacing, um, do the indenting of a sentence, the exact spacing or where a bullet, bullet point ends up, 
we spent a, a lot of time over the past couple of months just really focusing on that beautification so that when you get the document out, it's it's 90%, 95% ready to go. You may just have to go, oh, maybe I just want to remove this little space here. But then what we want is a feedback loop. If you find there's a space out of place, tell us there's a space out of place, it goes into the beautification project so that we can get as close to completeness as possible. We don't want someone touching the SOA once it comes out. We just want it to be done. Well, and particularly like formatting, it's just, I hate it. Every time I've got to do that for any document I produce, whether it's an SOA or not, like you, I just feel like an idiot every time I'm doing it. Like this is not a good use of my time. Like, you know, there's better ways to be doing this. So I'm right there with you. And for those that, like me, who are a bit finickety about that stuff, it's frustrating too. It's like, oh. That, that thing's not lined up, that bullet is different, you know, all those sort of things. And readers can be like that too. So our clients can get a bit funny if stuff doesn't line up as well. So that's fantastic. I'm loving that as a another way that, you know, save a bit of time on the on the back end of producing the SOA. What else have you guys been up to? Uh, so we did a presentation through the Tango uh, network of the Power Planner Hub mm-hmm. uh, where Tristan, our head of sales, demonstrated the Ascendium solution from a Power Planner perspective. So we, we've been working with a couple of power planning groups um, to come on board with Ascendium. And the main reason for that is, but most of the time, if a planner is using an external power planner, it's because that time to create that document is, is very extensive. And that power planner does have some strategic input to actually help you come to the outcome you need. Now, the manual creation of a Word document is not the value of a power planner. Mm-hmm. Their strategic insight and input and that conversation they can have with you to say, hey, did you think of this? Yeah. That's where we want to empower the power planner. So we went, okay, well, you're using your existing system now to do it. Why don't you try using Ascendium instead? And so that actually, we're bringing on our first power planning business, TNW Power Planning Solutions, mm-hmm. where they're actually going to be having access to Ascendium to prepare advice documents for their their, their users, so the, power, the businesses that engage with them. So that'll give them a faster level of turnaround, a higher level of quality control uh, through the Ascendium Soda system. Um, but it also leads to go, okay, well, now I can spend more time talking with the planners, power planner engagements, and, and spend more time on strategic discussion and, and how we can actually better work together, not the manual work. So we're actually working closely and speaking with lots of power planning groups because we believe that power planners will always be a part of the industry, but also technology will as well. And we have to come together to work together, just like we have with LML and CBA. Yeah, that's great because I think, um, you know, a lot of the work that power planners have been doing is sort of more like a PA it's, it's actually not a power plan in the PA in terms of Word doc, you know, formatting, you know, this sort of stuff. And it's, like you say, not a, a valuable use of their time. So the more we can get them down to that human to human element, that bit that they can really add value to where you're debating and, and talking through options and did you consider, I mean, that just elevates the quality of the advice too. You know, I mean, it's, it's it, all of that debate is what draws out, you know, the best, the best outcomes. So yeah, that's an exciting sort of progression. Is there, I'm curious if there's something you've seen practices doing recently with your tech that sort of really blew your mind a bit of this, if they um, been doing any more, so, I don't know, an enhanced client experience or anything that sort of really had a huge impact in the business? Yeah, so the soda enhancements we've done for the businesses that actually transitioned from the previous way of doing advice to the soda way means that they're not searching through a library of strategies to do. Okay. It's actually popping up the required strategies or relevant strategies at any point in time. So that's an, that's helping them with the efficiency of completing the advice. Uh, we have one business which actually had a power planner join uh, who was previously doing everything on Xplant. And what happened was she tried to use Ascendium the way you use Xplant. And it was taking her, her six hours. Okay. So, but the business had already developed their own little guidebook on how they use Ascendium to produce advice that they want to produce and how they want it. After going through that, um, she cut the time down to from six hours to range in between 40 minutes and an hour and 10. So it's that, that mindset switch of going, okay, well, if I do it this way to create the advice, it's faster, but I need to unlearn what I've learned. And that's just one of the experiences we had with the University of Technology Sydney is in the Masters of Financial Planning, the students that didn't use any technology before completed the advice inside of 40 minutes for their assignment. Yeah, okay. The students that previously used other technology because they were from the industry found it a lot harder to actually complete their assignment, but over time they completed it. 
It's just a new way of learning or understanding or something. Correct. Look, and it is a um, – it's so interesting when we're looking for solutions. It's like when people, you know, start with the solution rather than problem. But once you understand the problem and you sort of go, all right, well, we just need to do whatever gets us there, that's where you implement something and you implement it on almost its terms with your – end goal in mind and you stop worrying about the process you used to have and just worry about the outcome you're trying to deliver. You know, like let's just focus on the outcome. And I think that, I mean, you mentioned compliance teams before. I actually think that's one of the struggles they've had historically is they keep on reverting back to their old compliance process for a new tech. It's like, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is a new tech getting you a better outcome. You know, you need to adjust accordingly. Um, so yeah, that's really exciting. Um, now y- you're in tech. AI. I mean, you can't, if you're on LinkedIn, you can't avoid it. I've got to say, like, I, I reckon three out of four of my, po- the posts I see now are about AI and all the things you can do it. Um, do you see AI, if, if it's not already playing a part in, in Ascendium, you know, down the track? Or even if not, do you see any other tech headwinds that are going to sort of influence where advice tech and Ascendium goes? Yeah, so obviously we've been exploring a few different options. So one of the key things to remember is we are based on the Microsoft database. Yep. So we have access to all, all those tools that Microsoft has. Which are already heavily getting immersed in AI. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So given the they, they spent $10 billion on OpenAI, um, OpenAI is ChatGPT, mm-hmm. which is then helping power the co-pilot system. Yep. So where we see Microsoft heading is down that AI avenue and we see that playing a part in Ascendium and in there's lots of ways to do it, but the, we have to make sure it stays within obviously the PI and the compliance angle yep. um, for that. So we do see it playing a role. Um, I do see interactive SOAs um, being a part in the future mm-hmm. over the traditional hard copy print documents. Um, so solutions such as Live Prezo uh, will, will play a part in that interactive SOAs, um, so that's something that that we're keeping an eye on as well. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think AI aspects. It's really it's about what can be done within this this highly regulated environment and what can't be done. Obviously, the easiest things you can do are email templates, LinkedIn posts, award submissions, <laughs> uh, newsletters. Yeah. Like you can even write a business plan uh, with Chat GPT three. Uh, GPT-4. Yeah. So it, it does give you a lot of other aspects within your business that you can actually explore. Um, and I know Scale Up Power Planning, um, they actually do a bit on AI. So they actually have a course for power planners to use the chat GPT to actually assist in SOA creation. Yeah, okay. So there, there's a lot of people touching on it now. And I think the industry will move heavily towards tech. We, we just have to. Um, the whole world mm-hmm. is. We Everyone just has to go, okay, well, it's just a reality. It, it, it's something that I'll have to do. And look, I think, because I think we, we see these tools as, oh, it's about, you know, accessing the internet. It doesn't need to be that. It can be a smaller data set than that, right? So you can you can narrow it down and use this these smarts um, to just make it more experiential. I mean, when I think about it, you know, the information that's in an SOA, like you say, is quite static and it's quite linear. I mean, it has to be to be written that way. But if that was the, the foundation and then the client could ask questions that would take it to the answers that exist and gradually it'd get them there and then it'd say, hey, you didn't ask about this, make making sure that they covered all the elements they need to cover, um, then that would cope with all sorts of different types of learning styles and and way people, you know, people absorb information. It'd also tell you a lot about the next way you design it because of the way that people interact with it, you know. So I can see some some smarts that aren't quite as broad as I think people think they need to be. It's just, you know, applying that sort of way of looking at things to something like, you know, delivering advice. So, yeah, I'm hoping people much, much smarter than me are going to get on top of that. Um, So this can all get, you know, a bit more exciting. What else are you guys up to? I mean, I feel like I need to let you have a all of all three of you have a bit of a lie down and rest after the deal you've just um, come to market with. But what else is Ascendium up to? What have you know? Maybe it's not on the app itself, but is there anything else you've been working on that's um, going to add value to advisors? Yeah, so we we finished this now, but we haven't started commercialising it just yet. So there's always been a, a pain to actually start the application process <laughs> or the implementation process. <sighs> yeah. And so I understand there's solutions trying to explore that, but what our, our tech team have actually built right now within our, our system is open APIs in what we're calling our fund distribution. 
Now, what this means is when you're actually building the advice in Ascendium, you're telling it where money's moving, which bank account is contributing to which super, what, where's the, the rollover going, where's the new insurance at what level. So the system's picking up all this and you're, you're making sure you, you confirm all these instructions. Now, these instructions can be sent via our open APIs to fund, fund managers or superannuation providers or insurance providers. Mm. So that is probably something we're going to explore over the next 12 months, just finding the right partners. Um, it, it's working as of today, but we need to find the right partners or right fund managers to be able to connect to so that when a planner does advice, you can one-click generate the SOA. If the client accepts it, one-click implement, and it sends the instructions to open up an account, what the investments are going to be, um, what, super new, uh, what, what contributions coming in, and, and you can get a checklist summary for that for the for the admin to actually implement or follow up as well. And which is, I mean, it's it's the next thing, isn't it? Because um, what I've felt like in our practice is, you know, I can build a Formula One. Like I can build a practice that's, in that, you know, with systems and tech and people and processes and all sorts of wonderful things and then it hits implementation and suddenly we're driving on a pot-filled race car track. Like it's like it's just horrendous and it doesn't matter how far my Formula One fast it goes because I'm going to have to creep around all of the potholes. So, you know, to me that implementation bit is the next bit. It's it's got to be, and particularly as as it'll force us all to be more client centric, because that's really around making it easy for the client. Um, it's actually not as much about us or the product provider. It's just going. This actually should be that easy, <laughs> you know. Like you exactly. say, we've got all the instructions in our in our hot little hands. They know what they want. We've just got to find you know a way to communicate that so that everybody's happy. Um, so yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, so we got other things on the horizon, um, but I don't want to share those just yet. <sighs> Secrets, um, but they are they are quite exciting. Um, so I'll just give you a little sneak. So the the solu- the next part of the Ascendium solution we're looking to build over probably the t- next twelve to twenty four months uh, will be a tool that can engage. So if you if you look at your traditional client book, you may have say five hundred or a thousand clients on there. Yep. Now, you break those down usually between your A's, your B's, your C's, your D's, and you focus on the, those core 100, 120 clients that, that really generate the revenue. Now, what Ascendium is looking to do is actually how can we engage those C and D clients in an automated fashion through the Ascendium solution with all the guardrails, with the planner still ticking it off mm-hmm. in a profitable way? Yep. So that's something we're engaged in over the next 12 to 24 months uh, that we're looking to build and obviously get some of our um, users to be to test. Yeah, awesome. Super exciting. Well, we've covered a fair bit today. Is there anything else amongst the three of you we've missed? Anything else, um, Lee or Brian, that you wanted to add in or remind anybody of? Um, or Scott, anything else that we want to need to cover off before we wrap up? Um, probably just one other thing. I just want to touch base and obviously say, as I know, being an ex-planner and and have working with planners and licensees, et cetera, change is always hard, but it's not always bad. And so what, what I'm trying to mean by that is a lot of planners are, are really busy right now um, that, it's, that it's hard to really step back and go, what do I need in my business to actually help it be better? So if, if you can be 50% better than you were yesterday through utilizing technology, which we are very confident with, with, with our customers, that's 50% improvement in your business. What I'm just trying to say is don't look at, say, I must get 100% improvement in my business. Take small incremental steps, review your processes, review your PI insurance because that reduces your overheads, <laughs> review your technology, as, as you've said previously on, on the podcast. Um, just really be open to change and, and it, it's, it will take time. But if you have the right team with you, then, then it's actually going to be a lot easier than you expect. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Once, once they're beside you, then um, yeah, that difficult resistance goes, and uh, resistance goes, and you can actually start to crystallize some of those benefits, which is where the hard stuff is. Uh, Lee, anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up about the partnership or, or what's happening going forward? Uh, nothing material, Peter, but uh, a huge thank you to you for obviously uh, hosting us today and just super excited to be um, part of this with um, Ascendium and uh, with LML. So, yeah, looking forward to the success and hopefully we've got something brand new we can share with you in the near future. So um, that's it for me. I have no doubt. How about you, Brian? Anything else you wanted to, to share with the listeners before we wrap up? 
No, I'm all good, Peter. But uh, also, just like Lee said and Scott said, it's just about uh, seeing this come to fruition, and that's the exciting part. So we look forward to that. Fantastic. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Ascendium and this exciting new partnership with LML Insurance Group and Community Broken Network, then you can find their website link in the episode show notes, along with Scott, Brian, and Lee's LinkedIn details. I'd encourage you to re- reach out, and they'll point you to ro- towards the right person to answer any queries you have. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the show and for getting creative with the solutions you're bringing onto the advisor market. I cannot wait to see what you all come up with next. Thank you so much for your time. So are you a current user of Ascendium and suddenly thinking you need to see when your PI insurance comes due? You? you know, this sort of thing is really exciting. So I'd love to hear what you think of the partnership, whether that sort of got you interested um, in checking that out, or even if maybe you're not a user and you're now considering that based on the fact that they've gone into this partnership um, to consider the, the cost of our PI premiums. Um, please share your insights, share your take on the Ensemble Community Platform I'd love to hear what you think. Um, and of course, any tips about, you know, whether you've checked out Incendium and it's worked for you or not, we'd love to see all that on the platform. In terms of my thoughts on it, look, um, you know, creative partnerships that bring together the different elements of advice can only be good things, right? The more integrated the key stakeholders are in our businesses, the better able we will each be to deliver positive outcomes. So, you know, be inspired by this. Get your own creative juices going on what could bring better outcomes in your business through partnerships. You know, maybe it's even a partnership with another advice practice. You know, maybe uh, the different people you serve or the different services you provide can can sit well alongside each other and get a joint better outcome. So, you know, start to think a bit outside the box um, just like they have here because I think there's some wonderful opportunities that are going to exist there for us all. I'd also encourage, you know, all of us to embrace this this concept of guardrails in the systems we use, no matter what systems they are or for what function. Um, Guardrails are sort of those bouncy balls that use, you know, that we just follow, right? We follow the bouncy ball and it uses smart insights behind them to narrow down the strategies we consider or show us only the fields we need to complete for that particular type of client or, you know, any of that sort of narrowing down or, or personalization that can happen based on your experience through the system. You know, all of this sort of uh, narrowing down and personalization, these guardrails, all of it stops our brain having to be applied to checklists and remembering to do this and remembering to tick that box and do I need that field or not? Like occupying our energy with that is a distraction. Um, And it means that by sort of parking that and letting the system worry about that, we can instead focus on strategies and communicating them well to our clients. So this liberates us. I know that initially it can seem, as you're hearing it's described, that it's controlling us. It's not at all. This is just allowing you to focus on the important thing, focus on your connection with your client, on the wonderful strategies you can create for them. Um, and the fantastic transformations you can deliver for them. So, you know, really start to look for that sort of um, guardrail in any system you use as a way to identify something that really understands you and can add great value to your business. Now, as you know, there's only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, and that is avid curiosity. Now, to help you build that app, that habit, today's Curiosity Corner app, and you'll hear me having a bit of a giggle because not only does this deliver on the curiosity front, but it also delivers on the laughter front. So the app that caught my eye is called Career Roast, and you can find it at Six Figure. That's the number six, F-I-G-R dot com forward slash career dash roast as in lamb roast, R-O-A-S-T. Now, I'll be sure to pop the link in the show notes um, because, folks, this is the funniest thing I've seen in a very long time. Basically, you choose your roaster persona, meaning who do you want to roast you? Is it Elon Elon Musk? Is it Donald Trump? Logan Roy from Succession? The Rock or Snoop Dogg, right? Then you pop in your LinkedIn URL, your personal LinkedIn URL, and you let the AI do its work. 
Now, I'm happy to share um, the result I got because I just think it's hysterical and great fun and I encourage you to do it as well. Maybe share it on Ensemble and we'll share all the ones that that, um, come out for each of us. Um, But I decided I wanted a career roast from Snoop Dogg, who wouldn't? Um, And so I entered my LinkedIn URL in, I hit enter, and it takes a little while to work because this is utilising AI to come up with this answer, right? But here we go. This is what came back. Yo, 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 what we got here is Peter Diamantitis, or as I like to call her, Peter Dullamantitis. She's out here claiming to be a co-founder at Caboodle Financial Service, but services, but let me tell you, her career is more like a snooze fest at a retirement home. First of all, she's all about breaking Gen X out of the daily grind and into their ideal adventure. But let me ask you this, Peter, what's so adventurous about being a finance nerd? Ain't nobody getting their adrenaline pumping from crunching numbers and sipping on lattes. And check out her headline, y'all. She thinks she's a superstar with all those fancy titles like incurable explorer and guide and author. But let me tell you, her finance action hero books sound more like bedtime stories for insomniacs. She's out here talking about being a judge for some business book awards. Oh, wow, Peter, you must be a real expert at reading boring books that push you to sleep faster than my grandma's lullabies. And let's not forget her podcast, the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. She claims to be diving into the world of technology for financial advisors. But let's be real, Peter, you're about as tech savvy as my grandpa trying to figure out how to use a flip phone. So, Peter Diamantitis, with your boring financial career and your attempt at being an adventure guru, you're about as exciting as watching paint dry. Stick to counting your pennies because the rap game ain't for you, girl. Peace out. Now, does it get any better than that? I reckon that's the single best use of AI I've ever heard. So, I think it's it's super fun and it's a great example of the way AI can be used that isn't all about doom and gloom and is all about laughter and giggles. So, check it out and I would love you to share what it came up with for you on the Ensemble platform. So I'll look forward to seeing everybody else's and I'll be sure to go right now and share mine on it. Well, that's all we've got for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each week. And if you have an event coming up in the next 12 months or so, I've actually had some great conversations recently with groups looking to get a speaker on streamlining their tech stacks and discovering their next innovation opportunities and really sort of energizing their teams in sort of the growth going forward. So I'd be more than happy to tee up a time to get a feel for your event so we can brainstorm how I can best add value to your audience. So please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. That's forward slash Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.